shooters. It's been a long time since I shot a video for YouTube or any other social media uh, other than a few rounds here and there. But I'm compelled, mostly because people have been asking, and because I also want to just talk to you about what I think is the single best box magazine fed shotgun made. Um, there's a dissonant that's out there and it's a fantastic piece of equipment. Guys love it and they're winning championships like crazy. So no disrespect to that outfit, that company, Michael Whiteside and crew building a heck of a shotgun. Then you've got the VR80, which is a di whole different price point. Uh, and when I was looking at box fed guns, I looked at Dissident and I got very close to buying one, but if I compete, even if I don't compete on the level I used to, which I don't because I don't practice, I like to have two of anything I'm going to compete with. One to run, one to practice with, or a backup gun for any match I travel across country to go to. Uh, it's just prudent in my, my, in my mind. So I either going to buy, lay out, you know, eight to ten grand on Dissident, or I was going to buy two or three of the VR80s. And then I would do the same thing I did to these guys, smith them and play with them and monkey with them. Um, to make them as good as I could make them. But I ran into a demo at a local range in Idaho where they were demoing the Gen 12 from Genesis Arms. So I showed up and said, hey, can I shoot it? And it was the end of the day and people weren't really, I would say they weren't responding, but it was like they've been there all day demoing guns and Pat shows up, who they don't have no clue who I am, not that anyone should know who I am. But I show up and I'm like, yeah, can I shoot it? Sure. So they gave me five rounds and I burped five out of it. I said, uh, can I shoot five more? Sure. So I burped five more out. And I'm like, uh, that's pretty fast. Yep, I have that gift. So I shot probably 25 rounds to the gun. I went, wow, this thing didn't choke. I couldn't make it choke. I shot it off the shoulder and from the hip and it ran. Wow. So fast forward a year after that initial engagement with the Genesis Arms crew and I find out they're in Post Falls, Idaho. I make a little trip over there. I meet the crew and talk to them. It's a, I wouldn't call it mom and pop, but it's a small operation with really dedicated guys that are fully immersed in this platform. They love the shotgun. Well, I love it too. I really do. So I bought my first demo gun, which is this upper. Uh, and it's a Gen 2. Uh, I think they're Gen 3 now. They don't hold me to those numbers because again, I, I don't have any financial stock in the company of any kind. I know the guys, I like the guys. I'm only promoting it because I think it's the best thing going in, in magazine fed shotguns. It's rocket reliable, it just real, it just runs. And I haven't needed to do anything to it. In fact, I'll tell you the quick story. I picked this up as a demo gun, it already had several thousand rounds through it. Uh, and it's on a lower that came with their uh, adjustable stock or collapsible stock, which is very comfortable. The factory gun, which looks much like this, if you want to buy one, you can get it left hand version, right hand version if you like. But it comes kitted out pretty much like this. You can have external uh, Sega chokes and then they still offer a few with the Riley internal chokes with external threads. So you can have an external comp on the threads when you still have Riley choke tubes inside. Pretty nice setup. Anyways, uh, I bought the demo gun and I, with, I like taking things apart. It's my nature. That's why I've learned to do all the things I know how to do because I del delve into it, read about it, learn it, tear it apart, understand it, and reassemble it. And they asked me for a year, could you please not take it apart? I said, oh, man, I want to take this thing apart. True to my word, I said, no, I will not. So I shot it for a season. I put 4,500 rounds for the one I just showed you there. Flawless. Now, the very first 50 rounds, 5-0, the very first 50 rounds, I had a couple little hiccups um, till I find out it's not really shell picky, but there are one brand of shells that none of the new guns have that issue with, but my early generation gun uh, had a little problem with, and I'll, you know, I'll always tell you the straight dope. If you ask me, I'll tell you the truth no matter if I'm sponsored or not, and in this case, I'm not. Um, there's twin extractors, which helps with reliability, and there's extractor cutouts, as you're all familiar with, like on your Benelli M2, you gotta chamfer that edge there because you don't want rounds hanging up on it. So they wanna bulge a little bit right there. Some shells, uh, under pressure, will allow gas to bypass the seal at the bottom and migrate into the rim of the case and blow the rim out a little bit. So you'll get spotty extraction. Didn't happen very often, like, well, very often for me is ever, but two or three in a hundred rounds. So I had a couple malfunctions in the first 50, I went, oh, what is it? So I came home, picked up all my cases, came home, sectioned all the cases and figured out what it was. 
talk to those guys about it and say, well, that you got a second gen gun. The new ones don't aren't like that anymore. No problem. So I haven't had a problem since. So, but I full disclosure, when you talk to me, you're going to get the whole deal. So later on, uh, about a year after that, I bought my second demo gun, um, which is this one here. Beautiful. And I shot that in various matches. So I, that one's a veteran of superstition. This is a veteran of superstition. Uh, the Parma team shoot and um, the uh, Parma a multi gun, the high desert uh, three gun. And I've had beautiful success with it. I mean, I shoot as well as I shoot without giving any practice. The guns have been fan freaking tastic. And I'd love to see these in a, in a real formidable three gunner's hands because uh, there's nothing holding you back. This gun runs fantastic. Now, I ran it without comps. My first, my second one came with a comp. I took it off. Um, and I'll give you the re I'll reason why real quick here. Um, the uppers work on a short read. And I'm jumping all over the place. I haven't practiced videos in a long time. But the operating system is short recoil operated. The barrel, under, when you fire it, it reciprocates back and forth into the uh, uh, upper about 180 thou. 200 thou if left unabated if it work with no stop on it. But if you do 160 and 180 thousandths of an inch, depending on how you set it up, you don't set it up. It comes set up, ready to go. Don't monkey with it, just shoot it. I'm telling you. Uh, so anyway, that operation there had, uh, initiates the bolt to unlock and the bolt rotates. It's got a nine lug rotary bolt. It's all AR, it's LR308 lower. And we all commonly want to refer to all of our large frame ARs is AR-10s. Well, AR-10 is Armalite, and they have a different radius cutout at the back of the receiver right in here, okay? Um, so the most common one out there is the LR, the DPMS pattern, LR-308, and that's what this is completely based on. It's an absolute 308, LR-308 lower. Everything's cross-compatible. You drop this thing on the top, stick a magazine in the bottom, and you have a beautiful running, beautiful working shotgun. Now, it can be a three-gun shotgun, which is my primary focus, but I've made it do other things, and we'll get to that in a minute, or two minutes, or 20 minutes, depending on how verbose I get. Anyways, the short recall system, it has the barrel has to go back and forth for it to operate. So if you put a compensator on the end, there's a potential that compensator may say, slow down, barrel, and it may slow it down too much. It may not, uh, but it's one of those deals you have to recognize. It's kind of like limp wristing, you know, you regular guy grabs a gun and a guy or a female or a small statured person doesn't hold it quite as well, or even a full-size dude who wants to saucer and teacup because he saw it on TV somewhere, and the gun doesn't work. It's not the gun's fault. It's operator error. But I would let guns to work off my shoulder, on my shoulder, around corners, doesn't matter. This one does. I've tested it a lot. Uh, speaking of testing, you'll see on the right side here, I've been going slug crazy. So I've got a variety of uh, Foster and Brennicke style slugs from like uh, 1150, which is the Fiocchi Aero Slug, all the way to 1600 with the PMCs that are no longer available. Uh, and it runs them all. And I'm averaging three to four inches at 50 yards right now, um, which is the best I can get out, out, out of myself. So I, I'm very pleased with the, the, its ability to run slugs flawlessly and its ability to play slugs on target accurately. So it, they're a great slug gun. And then on the other side, for as far as load compatibility, those are paper shells uh, from Federal and they're 1180 feet per second, one ounce, runs them just fine. I run 1145s, which are the white box over here, 1145 ounce and eighth in competition. They run and run and run. It's all I've really run, really run on the gun in competition. I've been shooting everything in it so I can come to you and say it runs everything. And on the other end of the spectrum, that's an ounce and a quarter, uh, number sixes at uh, 1450, three inch, runs them like a clock. So this gun. Doesn't care what you put in it, it just runs. So you don't need to have to have double A's, you don't have to have RXP's, you don't have to have a special hull or a special load or anything. It doesn't use gas. So that reciprocating element of the barrel must reciprocate. You put a comp on it, it may, may make it have an issue. They sell them with it, it works. The two port comp is my preferred one if you're gonna put a two port comp on it, but it doesn't need it. I shot mine for uh, two different seasons, two different guns without a comp on it, and I can run it just fine. But once you're in open class, you got to have all the gigas and gadgets. So over the period of time that I've owned the gun, uh, after a year, I said, okay, I'm going to take this thing apart. So I am very intimately familiar with how the gun operates internally. And well, I really come up, couldn't come up with any upgrades that made a significant difference to reliability because the gun's dead reliable. 
my whole goal was not to ruin the reliability that's intrinsic to the gun with my modifications. Might be a tall order because I've added my first generation muzzle brake. Now, that muzzle brake is not attached to the barrel. It's attached to the handguard. So if you could make that go forward under gas pressure, it'll pull the forehand forward, which pulls the receiver forward, it pulls the gun forward, they're all attached. And I've done that by using what they call their SBM forehand, suppressor breacher model. So there's a threaded element, that a, a bushing that supports the barrel, because the barrel is supported at the rear in the, in the upper receiver, and it's supported at the front in that bushing. The older style ones, like the red, white, and blue, have a Delrin bushing in there that supports it. Works fantastic. This one's an aluminum bushing, and so I'm using that as my rear gas seal, and beyond that, I've ported the barrel and directed that porting to impact this baffle, this, this compensating element, to push the, uh, pull the rifle or the shotgun forward. It looks like a rifle, the shotgun forward. And it works very, very well. I don't have quantify, real hard quantifiable data yet, but my preliminary testing through using a sled is about 20% reduction in recoil. Not insignificant, at least not in my mind. But again, it doesn't need it to be an effective tool in three gun or any other venture you might have for your shotgun. Reliability is number one. There's five round magazines, 10 round magazines are what they commonly offer with the gun. Taylor Freelance offers base pads, which makes your 10s a 12. Because no one was making high cap mags and everyone's like, I need high cap mags! How can I possibly even consider the platform? Understood, understood, we're three gunners. So I learned how to bend Kydex and I made coupled. So I have 12 and 12, fastest reload there is. Faster than off your belt is this. But I don't really wanna make a bunch of Kydex. I'm gonna make some of these uh, Compensated guns, this latest version one, this winter I hope to make some. Maybe I'll retrofit existing uppers or I'll sell new uppers. We'll see how that pans out. But a guy down in Arizona, I won't give you his name. He goes by Pyro One. Imagine he's a fireman or something out of Arizona who's actually a really good three-gunner, multi-gunner in general. He's come up with this. Now you got 15 and 20 round mags. Takes two mags to make one mag. This is his coupling system. It works. So now there's no reason that this capacity is no longer a barrier to entry with the Genesis Arms Gen 12. Uh, this was an interim gun that I shot for a little while. They tried a long handguard model, which was kind of cool. It, it's a little front heavy for three gun, which ha helps dampen recoil, but it is dead sexy looking. And I cut one of their uh, other kind of comps off so I could blow all the gas forward. I don't like loud guns, really, I don't. but. There is a, a need for them on occasion. You can see this front one up here. This guy right here is my, basically my final version of my three gun model. I changed to a UBR stock. I like more weight in the back. I like the gun to balance more in the center. The factory butt stock is fantastic. It really cushions recoil and it works. I got several buddies of mine that are running these guns and that's what they use and they love it. I don't mind a little extra weight. I like the balance better and I'm wedded to the UBR. I think it's a good looking stock. And I add a kick easy, hey, kick easy, um, recall pad to all of mine, to my, even to the UBRs. And that really makes a nice difference to it. Not that recall is bothersome, that the, the more comfortable you are shooting a gun, the better it is. If you're shooting a gun and it abrades your hand and makes your fingers bleed, well, you ought to fix that. If your handgun's you know, got sharp edges on it and when you rack it, you cut your finger, you should fix that. You shouldn't put up with guns that, that uh, abuse you, especially if you're doing a lot of training. If you're you know, legitimately trying to be a really good multi-gunner, three-gunner, handgunner, shotgunner, clay shooter, you're putting rounds down range. And at the end of the day, your hands are abused, your shoulders are abused, your body's abused. Practice is not gonna work really well. So I'm really big into making guns smooth and comfortable, reliable, and easy to shoot. So reliability, again, came in the gun as it, as it was built. So same kind of setup, but I moved the comp further back into the barrel, potentially a little higher pressure level. I don't really know. I don't, I don't, have, a, you know, I don't have a graph data on where the pressure curves are. Uh, and when I'm working, making sure that they kind of self-clean, and so far this thing self-cleans, I am only concerned about can I get the comp off after I built up plastic. So that's, that's my next venture. So I, I'm not selling this to anyone until I know it is everything it should be. I can't put my name on my very first product ever and not have it be everything that I offer as a solid guy that tells you the truth all the time. Um, I have had uh, have abused a few different optics. Right now I'm working with, uh, not I'm using, not working with either company. Uh, the Trigicon RMR on a mount is fantastic. Uh, I just got one of those um, Jager Works Bros shields for the uh, SRO, and I'm gonna throw that on, on one of the uh, Warren mounts. 
which is actually with this it's universal mount it's pretty cool it'll take any red dot so this is the one element when I'm using the RMR and I also will be SRO on another one and I like how this thing looks it just kind of fits the angles of the gun and this is the uh, SIG uh, Romeo 8H they make a T more armored cost more this is armored enough in, in my estimation but either way plus I pay out of pocket for everything so this is the hot tip I think this is the three gun shotgun if you don't if you own a dissonant hang on your dissonant enjoy your life enjoy your gun have a good time if you got a VR80 that you like and you've worked on and it runs don't change I'm not telling you to change to a different gun but if you're in the market for a gun that runs all the damn time that shoots any kind of ammo is not particular it runs slugs it loads fast it shoots well it has all the gigas and gadgets and it's about 2500 bucks then you really want to take a close look at Genesis Arms. Uh, what else did I want to cover? No, oh, well, I do have my oddities here. So we'll talk about that for a second. My, as I got into the gun and started shooting it more and more, my brain said, why isn't this a replacement for everything else out there? Now, I do shoot some clays. I've been shooting clays since the um, early mid 90s and never to any serious degree. In fact, I'm a C-class shooter because I don't get enough punches. I don't shoot enough registered targets at 50 cents, 80 cents a dollar target to get punched up in class. But I love the game. Absolutely love shooting sporting clays. Five stand sporting clays. I'll shoot skeet and trap too, but that I really like. For the clays games, I really like it. So I want to make a clay gun. So I shot this gun, and I won't get into the whole story, but I shot this at Oregon State Championships. It was not well received. Complaints were made about me using a red dot when they thought I was using tracking ammo or something. And there was a whole bunch of misunderstanding at that particular event. It all got ironed out. Um, but the NSCA made some rules saying no more 18-inch guns in sporting clays. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. So I made a 26 and 78 inch barrel one. It's a Marlin 70s vintage Marlin pump gun barrel. I bought several of the, of the just the barrels and fitted them up to the barrel extensions it fits in the gun and I've been using this in sporting clays and I love it. In a subset of sporting clays there is FETASC. I'm not really sure what it stands for right now but it says specifically in the rules you cannot use red dots so there is a vent rib model with another long barrel. So I really am of mind that if you were just going to buy one shotgun to play any kind of clay sport and go waterfowling and use it for home defense, why would you buy a tube fed? Unless you're a three gunner and you want to shoot a tube fed division. Okay, I get that. Once you get a box mag, you're shooting open, kids. And even now that's easy. With carry optics, you don't need to shoot major three guns. You just got to hang two on paper for the most part. So just do it with a nine. So carry optics has made it really the bar, uh, the bar of entry into open has gotten a lot lower. This thing at 2,500 bu bucks versus almost double that, or a third of that, um, if you want a gun that you may or may not have to tune. Again, the, uh, Rock Island is, is making some really great stuff. I have several of their handguns, and they're rock solid. Ah, play on words there, right? So I wouldn't dissuade you from going that route, route either. Uh, I'm not telling you one way to wait, which way to go one way or the other. I'm just trying to tell you what I have found out over two years of use and a lot of time in, in the inner workings of the gun, saying that this is a running tool that will serve you well as a gauge in your life. Let's see, what haven't I covered? Uh, first gen, second gen, that gun, that gun, reciprocating. I think that's it. Uh, oh yeah, it's all, it's all, as you know, the lower, since it's LR308, is all cross compatible with everything AR. So this has a, uh, a hyperfire trigger in it. Uh, they're a competition hyperfire trigger, so I have one of the best let offs of any clay gun out there. Yeah, I got my K80, you know, that's a little grit in that trigger. We gotta try that AR trigger. Oh, that's nice. Yep, I love K80s. I'd take one in a heartbeat, but <laughs> I could sell all these maybe by maybe I could buy half of one. Again, no, I'm not trying to dissuade anyone or be disparaging towards any other uh, uh, game or any other gun. That's not my play here. But I would like you guys to, to, to be able to have an avenue into open class three gunning or to general purpose shotgun uses. Again, from home defense 
to clays and everything in between with one gun. Five round mags, 10 round mags, 12 round mags, 15 round mags, 20 round mags. Oh, uh, and uh, Weston Carry, Carry Concealed, makes these nicely curved that's on your belt, mag pouches. Available from Genesis, and you can probably get them from uh, uh, Concealed, Carry Concealed, Carry, I don't remember. It's Weston, he's a really good dude out of Idaho, and he makes great Guidex stuff. So I don't think I really have much more to share with you. I hope I didn't ramble on too long, but I know I did. Check it out. Ask me questions if you, if you want to. I, I'm here. I'm a resource for you guys for all kinds of stuff. A lot of you guys already know that. You're, I get questions every day, several times a day about what this, what about that, what do I think about that. So whatever level of relevancy I still have in the world of shooting sports, make use of me. I'm there for you. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Bye for now.